Hello Ratbags, it's Jade back with the Survival Show. Once a week I normally cover all the big survival news. Small games, big games, you name it, it's going to be here. I have had a little break when I was doing my Assassin's Creed stuff and December with holidays and all other stuff going on. But I'm back baby. 2021 is going to be a massive year for survival. So many brand new games coming to PC. Loads of new games coming to console or port jobs. So I'll be there every step of the way, just like I have been for the past five years. But today, big news for Art Survival Vol fans. Flying speed is being able to be changed by you very soon. It's a long quested feature and it looks like it's going to be added very, very soon for everyone. PC players are getting it right now. Rust has appeared on the Peggy website. Does this mean the game is going to be coming out very, very soon? Maybe not. We've already seen it appear on the ESRB site, but I've got some bad news if you're thinking it's going to appear next week. How did DayZ perform in 2020? What's also going on with next gen upgrades for that game? I've got all the info. And a little bit more extra info about the Sons of the Forest. What's happening with the console stuff? Are the chances that it's going to come any closer? Probably not after the news that I gained from another YouTuber, Farquet, last night. Also, Subnautica, Green, Hell, Osiris, New Dawn, Zelta and Atlas updates and news. Let's go, it's the survival show. So they've actually posted this stuff on the Discord rather than actual the forums that I can see or on Twitter, but Ark did get an update last night. That says it's a major version on the PC patch notes, but Xbox and PS4, it says it's also client version too. So basically that means it's server side and it should require some sort of download. Effectively though, they're adding brand new Explorer notes for the Genesis Chronicles. If you don't know, the Genesis Chronicles are meant to hype everyone up. It gives you some new notes to go and explore and your reward for doing so is some brand new cosmetic tech chest pieces. This is part of the set that will be as part of the final DLC for Art Survival Evolved in March. We've got some other stuff to do with mesh methods and pretty much players trying to get under the mesh or glitching through the map. And they've made some changes to the Managamar dashing when C4 is attached. So again, all very focused on PvP. They've also fixed the crash with the Taming HUD. Apparently that was upsetting a lot of people. And an exploit that allowed beehives to be duped. But the biggest thing of all, which I found interesting, was on PC, they've got a new single player hosting setting, which is enable level up for flyer movement speed. This is a long, long requested feature. So many people were upset when Wildcard nerfed flyers. They pretty much reduced how speedy they could all go. As it was kind of killing the game, everyone was just using flying creatures. No one was using any of the land dinosaurs. Now this happened years ago. It caused a bit of an outrage at the time, but it was definitely for the best. But now it seems they're finally adding something they actually promised over two years ago which was a command for you to actually adjust the flying speed yourself. So if you've got your own server or you're on single player and you want fast speed in dinos once more, you can go ahead and do this on single player on PC. Now it hasn't actually been implemented on Xbox or the PlayStation just yet as far as I can tell, but I'm guessing that will happen very near future. And that is really the one reason it's in the news today. There will be a community crunch tonight and I'm sure it'll have lots of details and info. If it's got something really sexy, I will give you guys a heads up about it on Sunday. But that for me is big news, particularly for ARK fans, being able to ride quicker on your dinosaurs. Okay, moving on to the Rust stuff. Now, I got tweeted by Jack here. He says to me, he found this Peggy rating. Now, if you do remember, guys, I said to you guys last week that just because a rating had appeared on the ERSB site doesn't mean that Rust is coming anytime soon. This happens with lots of games, and I used the example Cyberpunk, which was put onto the ERSB back in May, and it wasn't even due to come out until September at that point. But I did tell you guys that if it appears on the Peggy rating, that is usually a more concrete sign that the game is about to release. Peggy is pretty much the European rating site, and they generally don't put stuff up months in advance. It's usually on release day or the release week. So I did get a little bit excited when I clicked onto this link or saw this tweet, but sadly it does look like it was an error. Now, it may still happen. Rust is looking likely it's going to be coming sooner rather than later. And I fully predict to see it by March or April. When you click on the link that it actually shows, you can see the website has actually been taken down or this portion of it anyhow. Effectively, what they've done is they put up a placeholder release date of the 31st. I know some of you guys have been looking up on websites like Amazon and you may have come across some stuff that said Rust would come in 2020 on the 31st December. 
Now, actually, no one ever releases a game on New Year's Eve. You'd be an idiot to. It's usually just a placeholder marker when they don't actually have a proper release date. As you can see, Biomutant, a game that we know is going to be coming out in the second half of 2021, has got a release date of December the 31st, 2021. Pretty much every new release you see on Amazon that doesn't have a confirmed release date will say December the 31st. Now, it was interesting that the effort has gone through to put this on Peggy, but in reality, Face Punch and Double Eleven, who remember are the publishers and makers of Rust on console, they're probably just crossing off the T's and dotting the I's just in case it is ready a bit sooner than later. But I don't think this is going to happen in the next week. Obviously, this actually got put up on like the 31st December. It's already two weeks ago now. So as I said, the Peggy rating board only really puts up their ratings when the game is about to come out or within the next week. And since they've taken it down, I'm saying right now, don't expect rust in the next couple of weeks. I still fully predict it not to come out until March or April sometime. It did get me excited, and there is one as well. If you actually go through the list, there's one for the PS4, and it just leads you to exactly the same thing. So before anyone else does any clickbait nonsense about rust is coming, no, it's not. We have no confirmation it's coming any more than we did when we saw the ESRB news last week. I'm hyped for it guys, I can't wait to play. I've got my server running right now on PC to get me in the mood, basically to train me up. I prefer consoles and that's where I'll be playing when it hits. But Ratchad is ready. If you want to come and play on my server, you can hit us up in Discord, find the Rust chat and go ahead and look into the pin channel. We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got zombies, we've got lots of role play stuff and we have got PvP zones that are being worked on. But as soon as it hits Xbox and PlayStation, that is it. I am all over that. So Subnautica is come to Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. And I mean the below zero content. Of course, Switch doesn't have the first game and that's going to be added too. It looks like you're going to be able to buy a double package with Subnautica and below zero for a little bit more expensive price on the Switch. And I'm sure Xbox and PlayStation will have that same package. They do have a Twitter page that lists all the changes from development and I've been following this for a couple of weeks now and it is definitely showing signs that we're going to see Below Zero appear on Xbox and PlayStation very, very soon. I've yet to see too many things added for the console versions in the past, but it seems like they're ramping stuff up. There's particularly lots of bugs and stuff they've been squashing on the Switch and so I'm fully predicting this game to be out at some point in February. It could be sooner, who knows? There's no actual release date other than maybe early 2021. But Snorka Below Zero has actually changed its price now. They warned everyone this was going to happen, so it's full price on PC now. And they normally only do that when they're just about to release it out of early access. Incidentally, Subnautica has in had a price increase as well. They basically made it exactly the same price as Below Zero. As somehow, Subnautica was a bit cheaper. Both great games, I have been covering it. Plug, 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 plug. If you're a community YouTube member, you get to see the Let's Play episode so far early. I'll be continuing on with that as well. I've got another episode to come this weekend. And I may actually publish a couple of these just for everyone to see what I'm talking about. As soon as we get any more confirmed proper release dates for that, I'll be all over it. As Subnautica is fast approaching becoming my third most video of all time. It's only like 5,000 below arc now. And that would be quite nice to have Minecraft, Ark, Subnautica, top 30 survival games and a bit of Conan in my top 5. So Atlas, a game you guys know I don't really have much respect for since it left development pretty much empty for 8 months and various other problems and issues with the game. Well, they have been trying of late. In fact, I would say the last 5 months, their brand new lead developer and a new community lead have been doing better. It's been adding more and more items to make it more of an MMO and less survival. So pretty much reducing the grind. And they've just added tameable dolphins to the game as well as seed vendors and coffee. That seems like a small change, but it is pretty big. The actual overall outcome of some of this stuff really does mean that Atlas is becoming less and less like Ark and actually like a proper pirate MMO. The big part of this has been the farmhouse. Now farmhouses were meant to pretty much just gather certain resources and it started out pretty simply. Or they had things like the lumber yard, which literally just gathered wood. But they're now adding the mine and that will gather metals and gems and the quarry that will only gather stone, crystal, salt and flint. So you can literally start building your own little proper town. These have all got special models. You'll be able to place them and as long as they've got the right, I guess, fuel or you empty them on a regular, you'll be able to gather and mine resources without actually doing all the graft. 
Now they can still be damaged by enemies and they have been changing and balancing lots of things to do with explosions, explosives and barrels. All in all, it's a good move and it has given me a slight glimmer of hope that Atlas can turn it around from the shit show it was into something actually playable. So definitely in the near future, it's one of them games I'm gonna revisit and see how progress is actually being made properly for myself. We'll spend a whole week playing it. I'll give you let's plays, some guides, and of course, lots of live streams. So Bohemia have been pretty much crying out how well they've done in 2020. But also list a couple things of what they've got planned for next year. I'll bet still a little bit light on info. So according to the blog, they're still gonna have several major updates being put out in 2021 for DayZ, new assets and fixes, and they're going to try and fix the balance and stability of the game even more. They're also working on a next gen update. Now this is kind of good. I always felt like DayZ just has so many problems in console because it just can't actually function. The port job hasn't been particularly good and much like other games with big cities, particularly open world ones, they struggle to load in the assets. If you go near any sort of town or village in DayZ, that's quite big or built up, you will find the lag, the stuttering, the frame rates all just drop. So no actual release date of it, but it's good to know they are going to be doing a next gen update for Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. And again, once that happens, I'll definitely take another look at it and see how well it's been going. I think what's interesting about the infographic they put out was how much staff they've got through in the last year. They've got over 50 brand new positions open, or, or not even new, but actual positions open for the company. And they had 103 brand new members of staff last year. Now they've not been working on too many big brand new games. Vigor came out of course on different platforms. It'd been on Xbox and obviously it'd been on the PlayStation for a little while. And it's just appeared on the Switch or the other way around. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the other way around. But it does show that DayZ or Bohemia really are pretty poor at keeping their staff. Having such a high turnover for a company like that is pretty substantial. But when it comes to DayZ itself, of course, it had four updates in 2020. And although that seems like it's not far off what they'd originally said, they did promise bigger and better things at the beginning of 2020. So I'm still holding my breath whether or not they're going to deliver on some of the stuff they're talking about for 2021. But for sure, they've sold plenty of games. 1.2 million copies of DayZ across PC, Xbox and PlayStation. That isn't that much considering it's across all three platforms. Six and a half million players and they sold 758 DLC of Livonia. So yeah, again, I would say these are kind of underwhelming. But underwhelming or not for me, it still propelled Bohemia to have one of their record years. Obviously with everything that's going on with lockdown, Across the board, all of their games have done a little bit of a boost, except maybe Wildlands, and they obviously are pretty happy with the way things are going. All in all, they've sold nearly 6 million games and DLC in 2020 alone. With Rust currently hitting 234,000 players, the biggest it's ever had, DayZ also hit one of its biggest. It had 44,000 people playing it recently. That's nearly double the amount of its average over the last year. So it has been performing well on Steam. It's always just been the console versions that have let the game down. So fingers crossed the next gen versions really do help with that console making it feel good. And just to finish off, like I said, with a couple of things, Zelta, a kind of don't starve survival game where you run around fighting off zombies in towns, gathering resources, building up defenses. We've got brand new options for melee, changing up and mixing up how things work with it. Lots of new stats and stuff. I gave this game a shot. It was incredibly tough when it came out a good couple of months ago. I'm very interested in giving it another revisit very soon. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I do love survival games that aren't just what you kind of expect first person chopping trees down. And Vigor, again, I dropped this info in one of my live shows the other day, but they've got a brand new combat update. I've been given some access to it, so I will be checking it out. Pretty much improving logistics of bullets, the way the guns work. If you don't know, this game is all about you getting a mining ship. That's the one in the background there. And you can also come across enemy mining ships as you go from sort of location to location, gathering resources, and you can even explore the overworld. You've got these cogs or metal enemies that will come and shoot you. And it looks like they've improved combat massively. The shotguns, the sniper rifles, Gatling gun, a whole bunch of new stuff has been added, I do believe, as part of this update. So yeah, it's definitely something I want to check out. It looks pretty cool. We've been following this one a while. We've dipped into it every time they've had major update. So yeah, expect some sort of live stream or two when it drops near the time. 
Everyone will get a chance to play this though when it releases on the 19th of January on PC. And another one just to recap. Green Hell has got the new map area. Now this is an experimental test branch. If you don't know, Green Hell is coming to Xbox and PlayStation. It's already out on the Switch. I didn't give it very good reviews. I found that the colours and performance just weren't good enough. I'm hoping it will be a lot better on the actual consoles, the bigger ones. But this is adding part of their new Amazonia forest. Pretty much a brand new landscape to go and explore. New items, new quests and new uh, indigenous people to go and talk to. The big part of the Amazonian forest is that there will be actual NPCs that are friendly and they'll give you quests or you'll be able to do certain things for them as well as obviously, yeah, explore brand new area. I'm still fully predicting we'll see this hit Xbox and PlayStation very soon and then we'll just get an update alongside the PC when it's all done. But yeah, you can go and try it out for yourself right now. Just log into the test beta and you can see what's happening with Green Hell and all the new stuff they've added. So you guys know I said that Sons of the Forest, it doesn't look likely to be released on console until maybe 2023. With its early access launch due in 2021 on PC, it'll probably take a year to complete or do. So I really don't see this game appearing on Xbox or PlayStation until that time. Now that was pretty sad news. End Night haven't always been the most communicative of developers, but they have been speaking to Farquet. They've done another Q&A, so loads more info about that. Go and check out Farquet's channel, great survival YouTuber, and obviously the king of the forest now loads of questions were answered but he did again raise the prospect that console fans will be disappointed there's no actual release date and they got just a pretty one-worded reply that they haven't announced any other platforms than pc yet fingers crossed this means as farquet says that they may be thinking about getting a port team over to do the job and they just don't want to commit to anything just yet they're a bit bigger now so they've got a bit more money maybe they can afford to do it if you didn't know they ported the forest themselves over to playstation 4 that's why it didn't appear on xbox nothing to do with exclusivity purely because they simply did the port work themselves they just didn't have time to do it for both consoles now obviously they're starting work on their sequel so it doesn't look like they're going to ever make The Forest the first one for the Xbox but I would really love it if they could find a port job team. I've recommended it to them before, I've said it, they should absolutely get someone else involved. Now they've got the money, hopefully they can pay for it or at least go into a partnership with another publisher just to get the Xbox version of The Forest done and maybe speed up the process so that Sons of the Forest is playable on console in 2022. Otherwise, honestly, it really does look like you will not be playing this on any type of console until 2023. So not exactly brand new news, but it is reconfirming that End Night really don't want to reveal any plans. And yeah, like I said, I think it really looks likely we won't see the forest on console for a while. So I spoke about this briefly before, but basically this game was dead. Hadn't had an update in April, no communication from developers other than a bit of saltiness on some comments. And then all of a sudden in November, they had an update for the first time. They spoke about adding brand new survival mechanics to it or ones that have been long promised. And it seems like they've been back on the board and they're doing hot fixes. They also announced that they've actually got rid of their publisher, the same guys that originally published Ark. So this could be a good thing. According to Phoenix Fire, the actual developers of Osiris New Dawn, which is a space survival game, they will now add a new community manager to the game, adding brand new websites, going to be all over social media. And of course, the main thing is that they're updating their game again. And it does seem like progress is being made. Hopefully they can turn it around. This game had such, such promise. And regardless of the problems they did have with their publishers, they really could have done a little bit more to communicate with their player base and just explain that stuff is going through a hard time. Hence why they've dropped. They used to have a mostly good score, but it's now mostly negative due to the negligence that they had. Yeah, I'm fingers crossed they can get this up and running back to a state. We might actually see some promise delivered on Osiris New Dawn. And there we go, guys. I know it's tough sometimes. You maybe just want survival stuff, and sometimes I'm doing my Assassin's Creed or maybe another game I like the look of. But as I said, I am mostly a survival channel. I will still cover some of these bigger games when they come out, but the next six months for survival is huge, particularly if you're a console fan. So many brand new releases or ports coming over. So I'm going to be all over it once again. So every week, the survival show. Let's go. I'll see you lot later.